Welcome back. Whitlock and Wiley, LeVar Arrington's back with us. Let's move to Dallas, where people are singing Dak Prescott's praises after a monster game against the Detroit Lions Sunday. Dak has been putting up big numbers this year at the expense of Ezekiel Elliott and the run game, whose numbers are way down. But Hall of Famer LaDainian Tomlinson just raised an interesting theory about Dak's rise on Undisputed yesterday. Anytime you have a young quarterback, you got a young offense coordinator, you're going to want to try to uplift that young quarterback to be in the MVP race, right? Okay. And so naturally, you're not going to run the ball as much as you used to. Mm. <clears throat> you buying this? Uh, not for the same reasons, but I'm going to probably go to the same place. Um, we all know incentives shape behavior. So if you're any offensive coordinator out there, you're incentivized to highlight the passing game and the passing league because on your resume, if you have a tremendous passer, it will help advance you up the ranks. Having a tremendous running back, which is a position that's devalued, guess what? It's going to be devalued even on your resume. So you walk up into an uh, owner's meeting with a uh, head coach opportunity and you sit there talking about your running game. Even the owner's going to say, okay. But, Unless you're talking about Lamar, you're right. Yeah, but if you're talking about a quarterback, yeah. now you got my attention. So I think his incentives are shaping his behavior on top of Dak Prescott showed up this year and Ezekiel didn't. When, hey, for, you can't be the teacher's favorite student if you ain't in class, brother. You in Cabo. Guess what? All right, Dak, I've been in the quarterback room with you. I'm your former teammate. And now I'm actually coaching you? Well, let's do this until Zeke figure this, figures this out. So I think it's really just a lot of coincidences as well as, let's be real, he, he's following the path of success, and Dak is going to lead him there. This is a classic case of a quarterback having to prove that you have to come back to... You, you have to make it a point for, for him to, to hand the ball off versus throwing it. Early on in the season, they were giving they were giving Zeke the ball, and these defenses were prepared to stop Zeke. Whether it was because he wasn't in camp, his his you know his his win, whatever it was, they were shutting Zeke down, and that was leading to them losing games. They I, I made the stat the stat um, the other day. This is the third time they've gone forty plus throws with with. Uh, with yeah. Dak in, in this situation. And they've only done that four times ever in his entire career. So they're trying to win games with Dak's arms and I don't, uh, his arm. And I don't think it's truly based upon trying to put him in, in the MVP race. I think these defenses are making it so the game has to be won with Dak's arm versus Zeke's legs. Why couldn't it be the Cowboys' offensive line? Mm. And Zeke Elliott are making it that Dak has to win these games. That's what I think I see. I see an ineffective Ezekiel Elliott, and I see an elite offensive line that's come back a little bit. Yeah. And I see a team that again, I look, I, I can't see the difference between Tony Pollard and Zeke mm. and from the running back position in terms of effectiveness. And sometimes I think uh Pollard's got a little bit better vision than Zeke this year. I to me. Zeke crossed the finish line. He got his contract. Dak doesn't have his contract. He hasn't crossed the finish line. Kellen Moore is being smart. There's one guy out here that's extra hungry, extra motivated. Our offensive line's not doing what it used to do. I got to go with, I have to go with Dak Prescott. They have no other choice. He's been their only reliable option in their victories. Yeah, I want to clarify uh, that the Dallas Cowboys won their first three games. Yep. True. And in those first three games, Zeke had 55 carries for 289 yards. Then they lost their next three games. 58 carries, same amount of carries, but basically. No yards. But 202 yards. So this is something that you got to go layer two when you talk about uh, physical response to a layoff. When you are gone from a situation, usually we always traditionally hear about you're going to Pull your hamstrings soon you come back if you're not in football shape. <laughs> or, and this is the alternative, we're seeing it right now, or you can come back full of, like, the excitement and the conditioning, but guess what? You, you don't have a second verse. Uh, you're going you're gonna to tap out soon. Ezekiel's effectiveness has now hit a wall, and that's a part of conditioning. We always talk about, oh, if you come back, you're not going to be able to start well. 
How about you won't be able to finish what you started? And I think Ezekiel right now went through that slump, and now if you look at his numbers, they're roller coastering. So this is a guy that, because of the lack of conditioning, I think that even the game plan is starting to adjust. So why not rely on Dak? This is the best version of Dak we've ever seen using his arm and just trying to see how we can now I, stabilize. I, I'm going to stick with as long as Dak can win the game with his arm and make it difficult to just play against the pass, the run will open up for him. Yeah. Well, uh, Dak's about to get tested uh, this Sunday. He's finally, you know, he's going to play the <laughs> Patriots defense. England. And look, it's been great what Dak has done. But I want to see him pass this test because we've extended the MVP conversation so far that somehow Dak's involved. Well, I don't know. Too. Yeah, I know. And now Ladanian Tomlinson has. Yeah. And I've read other stories of people bringing Dak into the MVP. And it's kind of far-fetched to me. Really? Now, second, second in touchdown passes? Lead, six league and four. Oh, wait a minute. I got to do my part before we can do ours, right? And, and, and second in the league in touchdown passes and... Leading the league in yards? He's not close to Lamar or Russell Wilson. It's not even right. the same but plan. Conversation. conversation. Because it's fluid. Again, y'all expanding it not fluid? the conversation to levels like, oh, my God. Hold on. When, when Aaron Rodgers was inserted into it, it I, wasn't a resistance to him being in it. I didn't and like realistically. It. But uh, I didn't like it, but his team's 8-1 and one or something like that. Yeah. Oh, Zach Prescott has a very good Coming chance. Coming up. Of no, he himself in that race. We'll give you our does. latest <laughs> approval <laughs> race from Philip Rivers and tell you if oh. Rivers is done as a starting quarterback. Oh, I, I got to leave this. Who threw away any chance the Chargers had to steal a win from the Chiefs in Mexico City last night with four interceptions, including a crucial red zone pick that sealed the game. Marcellus. Yes, sir. You think Father Phil is done as a starting quarterback? Your father time is knocking on <laughs> Father Phil's door. Oh, um... Can I answer this by giving you my evidence and then give you my conclusion? One, it's amazing in sports culture now with Cam Newton. We use the eight-game sample size to say, look, Cam, it's time. It's over. It's time to move on. And now we have reduced that eight games to two games with Phil Rivers in terms of seven interceptions. Lack of mobility comes into conversation. Tyrod Taylor, a 2.0 quarterback who is conservative with the ball but doesn't turn it over. So there is internal conversation around can we move Phillip Rivers? The biggest incentive is the money. He's in a contract year at 37 years old. This is the perfect insertion point to depart from Phillip Rivers. So my conclusion is, I think it's over for Phillip. I think they can Woo! find Damn it! And I got my season tickets for next year. I think if Phillip, my quarterback. Father Phil needs to go and be a stay-at-home dad. Oh, don't uh, do that. It's done. <laughs> <laughs> it's done yeah, for Father Phil. Nine kids. He ain't staying home. <laughs> All right, let's get to our approval rating. I think. Uh, big drop-off, 18-point drop-off from the last time I did, Father Phil. Uh, I got him down to a six in job performance. Just too many INTs. Mm. Uh, everything else pretty much stays the same. 61 role player. Oh, man. Uh, higher than that. Look, he had two bad games, and it's been a roller coaster season last year. Tremendous year. So I think they'll bring him back in a reduced setting to try and let him go out there and fight for it. But only a job performance falls for me. Everything else right. is still good. You think I was hard on him. The internet has him as a dumpster fire. Prisoners of the 43%. <laughs> Damn, oh, All right, that's it for us. Time now for Rachel Bonetta. Mm. Lock it in. Nerds!